Duke Cosimo I de' Medici founded the Florentine Tapestry Works in 1545, opening to separate workshops for the Flemish weavers Jan Rost and Nicolas Karke, and putting at their disposition the most important mannerist artists, Pontormo, Bronzino, Bacchiacca and Salviati. The iconography of the first tapestries produced alludes to Cosimo's desire to present his rule over the new duchy, both as a continuation of the Medici families, prestigious cultural and political tradition, and of Roma Augustan Florence. In the first tapestry produced, the portier with abundance, the border uh, the border quotes uh, the frame motif used in the life of Christ set uh, completed for Medici Pope Clement VII. Oh, sorry. Uh, scusi. Scusate. Sorry. This is identical. This border and this border. In the foreground, a putto offers a tortoise a slice of squash or melon, both imported from the New World. The tortoise with the sail was uh, the device chosen by Cosimo il Vecchio de' Medici, known as a pater patri, literally founding father of the nation, and adopted by Cosimo I. In both cases, the device was accompanied by the motto Festina Lente, hasten slowly, used, according to Suetonius, by the Emperor Augustus. Um, sorry. The male and female peacocks in the garden could be mere representation of exotica. Um, they might, uh, however, allude to the device of uh, Giovanni di Cosimo il Vecchio with uh, its motto, Regard Moi, and uh, to the emblem of uh, Eleonora di Toledo, Cosimo the First Wife. Her device was uh, a female peacock with the motto, Cum pudore leta fecunditas, coined for her by Paolo Giovio. The antique revival dress and the pose of the allegorical figure chosen by Bronzino for uh, the abundance tapestry allude both to Botticelli's Primavera, painted for the Medici, and to Donatello's abundance commissioned by the Republic government around 1430. These statues a statue was set on a column in the marketplace, the economic center of the city, built on the site of the ancient Roman Forum. This. Before it was destroyed in uh, the 18th century, it was considered a symbol of Florence in, in its Renaissance glory. Bronzino has transformed the, uh, Donatello's, uh, Donatello's cornucopia into a vase filled with flowers, possibly jasmine, a plant as exotic at the time as the turkey that is standing behind the putto, which you can see in the next illustration. The scene is set in a doorway that opens onto a garden with the rail plants which might allude to the botanical gardens planted for Cosimo I. The topiary sculptures resemble the ones created by artists and gardeners in 1543 for the allegorical garden at the Medici Villa di Castello. In the background, there is an island city with a classical palace at its center which resemble the map of the ancient capital of Mexico, an image readily available 
in European courts after its publication with the Cortes letters in 1524. The portier with the justice liberating innocence alludes to how Cosimo's just rule substituted the tyranny of his predecessor, Duke Alessandro de' Medici. While the meaning of the allegorical figures of the justice, innocence, time, and truth is clear, the interpretation of the four animals present in the tapestry has been the object of discussion. Erwin Panofsky interpreted the serpent as a perfidy, the wolf as a greed, the lion as anger, and the dog as envy. His analysis, based on Cesare Ripa's Christianized iconologia, was considered inappropriate by Lynette Bosch for the humanistic imagery of Cosimo's cart. In the 15th and 16th century, iconographic handbooks, the serpent, wolf, lion, and dog presented together allude to the Egyptian goat Serapis, who was identified by Macrobius with the sun, controller of time. The serpent symbolized time and the three animal heads, its manifestation, present, past, and future. The symbolism of the Serapis Tricipitium, literally of the three heads, had been introduced in Florence by Piero Valeriano's Hieroglyphica, dedicated to Cosimo I. On the left side, time unveils truth, personified by a naked young woman, introducing the theme of a veritas filia temporis, truth as the daughter of time. This theme uh, made its appearance in Medician iconography in 1536 on the cover of the Adrian Villard's Liber Quinque Missarum dedicated to Duke Alessandro. According to Bosch, its iconographical source was Aulus Gellius Attic Knights. In this portier, we also find references both to works of art that belonged to the early Medici and to two ancient Hellenistic models. The bust of the figure of the truth with her high, well-separate breasts reminds us of the figure rises on the famous Farnese cup acquired by Lorenzo il Magnifico. Uh, the allegory figure of the spring in another portier is accompanied by symbols of the three astrological signs, Gemini, Taurus, and Capricorns. Capricorn, sorry. It derives from the classical motif of Venus on a ram, an animal that once again alludes to the Capricorn, the ascendant chosen by Cosimo out of the emulation for emperors Augustus and Charles V. Lucretius himself linked the spring to Venus Genetrix, who defeated evil and strewed flowers to restore peace and fertility on earth. Bronzino's sonnet on the subject, Sopra una pittura d'una venere, has recently been linked to the tapestry. In Vincenzo Cartari's Imagini, Venus is presented riding a ram as an allegory of spring and as a mother of the human race. Venus has also been associated with the goddess Flora, venerated by the ancient Romans, who dedicate celebration, celebrations to her in springtime, known as Ludi Floralis or, or Fro Floralia. Aries, also a ram, is the first sign of the zodiac of the Florentine calendar year, which began on the, the uh, 25th of March, according to legend, the date of Florence's foundation.
The birth of the Cosimo's son, Francesco I de Medici, on the uh, 25th of March 1541, made the Flora Spring and Flora Florence metaphor even more fitting. The figure of Venus Flora strewing Medici roses and Florentine lilies can thus be, be interpreted as an allusion to a new golden age born with the Cosimo's just government as a presented injustice liberating innocence. The two tapestries, both based on Bronzino's cartoons, were in fact conceived as a pendants and have identical borders with the Medici and Toledo arms. The portier with the Medici Toledo coat of arms ce celebrates the noble and enduring dynasty founded by Cosimo and Eleonora. Between the coat of arms of, and its crown, a falcon holds a diamond ring in a talon and a scroll with the motto Semper, the emblem of Piero di Cosimo de' Medici, also used by Pope Leo X and Clemens VII. The coat of arms is flanked by allegorical figures uh, that allude to the virtues of the house. Apollo, the protector of the arts and sciences, and by Minerva, the goddess of military science and wisdom. The two deities, below are allegories of the Florence's rivers, the Arno and the Munione. The insignia of the imperial order of the Golden Fleece, which circled this, uh, the coat of arms, was granted to Cosimo I by Charles V. It symbolizes the Medici's reconquer prestige. The coat of arms is set on a rock, which represents the solidity of a family founded by Cosimo and Eleonora, able to resist the unfavorable winds represented in the border on the sides. The motto Fundata Enim Erat Super Petram, divided between the medallion in the upper and lower borders, comes from two New Testament sources, Matthew's precepts and Luke's sermon from the mountain. It may well be, have been chosen by Canon Pierfrancesco Riccio, who was both Cosimo's secretary in, and overseer of the tapestry works. Two religious tapestries drawn by Salviati, a lamentation and an uh, eceomo, include the Medici coat of arms and emblems decorating in the border. borders. The choice of the subjects reflects uh, Duchess Eleonora's personal devotion to the cult of a passion of, the, of Christ. The presence of Nicodemus in the Lamentation may allude to Nicodemism, the form of dissimulation used to avoid religious persecution theorized by Juan de Valdez. The tapestry exhibited in the priors of chapel of Palazzo Vecchio might have hung at first in Eleonora's private chapel. All the motifs decorating the border of the Eceomo tapestry, except for the Noli Meltangere at the top, are Medician and Florentine symbols. There are two Capricorns and two crowned Medici Toledo uh, uh, coat of arms circled by the insignia of the Golden Fleece. Two lions with the one front po post on a bowl, red like uh, uh, the ones in the Medici coat of arms, represent the Marzocco, the symbol of the Florentine Republic. We know that uh, Duchess Eleonora held this tapestry in great consideration. In 1549, she requested it to be sent to her in Pisa. The ten grotesque spagliere, designed by Francesco Verdi, known as Bacchiacca, were woven for the space below Salviati's frescoes with the stories of Furius Camillus in the Sala dell'Udienza in Palazzo Vecchio. 
this combination follows the innovative precedent set by Raphael and his collaborators in the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican Stanze. The rounded canopies at the center and the, along the borders of most of Spalieri remind us of the once fresco in the st stanza dedicated to Constantine. In this Spalieri, Medici emblems and secular and Christian symbols are combined into a kaleidoscope with the traditional grotesque imagery. The decorative elements also include a variety of fish, birds and other animals studied from life, which represent the truly innovative aspect of this Spalieri. Bacchiacca's almost scientific representation of fish reflects his, uh, his uh, uh, specific attention to the subject. He had, in fact, worked with the philosopher and naturalist Simone Porzio, who wrote a treatise on fish. Bacchiacca's interest matched Duke Cosimo's passion for nature and botanical and medical text. Most of these pallieri have a central medallion bearing an allegory that allude to Cosimo or his wife Eleonora and their virtues. The allegory of, of charity at the center of this tapestry probably alludes to Duchess Eleonora, the prolific mother of the new dynasty. The goats being milked, which appear in the candle motif uh, on the right can be interpreted as a symbol of, of her charity. Ram's heads, allusions to Cosimo's zodiac sign, appear at the center of the upper margins of the most of the spalliere, as well as in the frame of a central medallion of this tapestry. Below them, we see two bill, billy goats balancing their hooves on balls from the Medici coat of arms, which probably allude to the unstable nature of fortune, which is often represented on a globe. The female figure poised on a, uh, on a fish or dolphin with, with a winged putto above her head is described in 15th century documents as a fortune but has also been interpreted as a representation of Venus Marina. The image of Fortuna Marina, already cited in Cicero's De Officis, was described by Cartari as a figure sailing through surf, as she was depicted by Salviati in Palazzo Sacchetti in Rome in a fresco, that might well be the iconographical source of Bacchiacca's image. The allegories of Fortuna Marina and Venus Marina might also allude to a wish well to Cosimo's maritime initiatives, the construction of ports of, of Leghorn and Pisa and the creation of fishing areas in Tuscany. The Joseph series is the absolute masterpiece of the early production of the Medici Tapestry Works. Made for the Sala di Duecento in Palazzo Vecchio, the series included 20 tapestries woven from 1545 to 1553 after three cartoons by Pontormo, one by Salviati and 16 by Bronzino. Cosimo's decision to dedicate the tapestry to Joseph had political overtones. Joseph is a metaphor for the triumphal return of the Medici to Florence after their exile. His benevolence to his brothers, despite their previous betrayal, makes him a paragon of the political virtues inspired by God and alludes to Cosimo's just government. The Joseph tapestries were also conceived as a celebration of the new golden age that began with the accession of Cosimo, who revitalized the Medici's cultural and political prestige. 
This iconological interpretation explains the presence of the portraits in the tapestries, not only of the Duke and Duchess and their courtiers, but also of the eminent protagonist of the Florentine cultural scene. The first tapestry made for the series, Joseph in Prison and the Pharaoh's Banquet, includes a representation of the banquet held in the loggia of the Medici Palace in 1539 for the wedding of Cosimo and Eleonora. This banquet was described in a text published by a member of the Florentine Academy, Pier Francesco Giambullari, who appears in the tapestry whispering in the ear of Cosimo, portrayed as the pharaoh. Giambullari, an Old Testament scholar, may well have conceived the iconographic program of the entire series with the help of another academician, Giovan Battista Gelli, also portrayed in this tapestry. Gelli, the man dressed in red, wrote the verses sung at the wedding by a musician dressed as Apollo, also present in the tapestry. Gelli was one of the protagonists of a debate concerning the use of Italian in literature of the so-called questione della lingua. At the center of the scene, we see Duchess Eleonora in the role of the pharaoh's wife, dressed according to Spanish style, and wearing a fashionable blonde toupee and a pearl necklace with a pendant that the Cosimo acquired for her in Venice as a wedding gift. The presence of the dwarf Morgante completes this representation of the life at the Medici court. A direct allusion to cultural life in contemporary Florence and to the debate that animated it appears in Joseph explaining the first dream. In March of 1547, Benedetto Varchi had the open debate known as a paragone concerning the hierarchy of the arts. It originated from an opinion expressed by Michelangelo who placed sculpture far above painting and the other arts. Salviati turns the tapestry into a sarcastic expression of his position in the complex artistic debate. He, plays, he has placed on the left a serpentine pyramid of the intertwined figures inspired by Michelangelo's compositions and topped by a reinterpretation of one of the ancient Roman Dioscuri statues reproduced by Raffaele in his cartoon for one of the tapestry in the ex of the Apostle set. Salviati has included a portrait of Michelangelo in the scene. We can recognize him as the figure listening to the Pharaoh's conversation with Joseph. His eyes and beard remind us to, uh, of Bonarroti's features, both in his portrait by Bugiardini and in the fresco profile by Vasari. Salviati has also included a self-portrait recognized by Candice Adelson, placed among the figures in the foreground, almost hidden by an Egyptian soldier on the right. Bronzino also seems to express his position in the same debate, in the tapestry with Joseph fleeing Potiphar's wife. By depicting in his cartoon an imaginary room furnished with grotesque tapestries, gilt statues and bas-relief lunettes with the loaves of goods, Bronzino has presented a compendium of arguments in favor of painting. The pharaohs receiving Jacob into Egypt also makes reference to contemporary events. It includes what might well be a portrait of Charles V, the 
Habsburg Emperor who supported Cosimo's accession and his dominion in Tuscany. He is a person with a red feather hat looking out at us, who resembles the emperor as he was portrayed in Paolo Jovio's Elogia Virorum, published in 1575. In Joseph Cup found in Benjamin Sack, one can discern the city walls of Florence and possibly the city gate known as the Portal Prato, through which Cosimo and Eleonora's wedding procession enter. In the background, on the left, there seems to be the portrait of the Cosimo III secretary, Pier Francesco Riccio already portrayed by Bronzino in the crossing of the Red Sea in, Eleonora, in Eleonora's chapel. In the figure in the background on the right might be Cosimo Bartoli, a noted member of the Florentine Academy who was close to the Duke. His features resemble Bartoli's in a print made in 1564 especially if you keep in mind that he was almost 15 years younger when the tapestry was made. In the burial of the Jacob, Joseph is represented dressed as a, the priest conducting the funeral rites. His features are modeled after those of Philo of Alessandria, the first century philosopher who wrote De Josepho, one of the principal sources of the iconograph iconography of the Medici series. The resemblance with the portrait of a philo uh, published by André Tevé in 1584 is quite striking. There is, in short, in the final tapestry of the story of Joseph, a clear reference to its iconographic source. Thank you for your